Okay, guys, uh, I think we're gonna get started here. Just a quick introduction. I'm Greg, I'm the CEO of Dark Fusion Holdings. It's great to be here with everyone. Uh, we appreciate you, of our ambassadors, and really the purpose of this um, Q&A tonight is to give all of you an opportunity to ask some questions. Uh, I know we do, we have our events that are periodically run. There might be a lot of questions around the roadmap and what's going on. So this is really the, the platform and the forum uh, for you guys to ask the questions and get the answers directly from the executive team. Just a quick introduction. We've got uh, Nick Vandenberg online, uh, our enigmatic uh, CMO. Uh, <laughs> we've got uh, Greg van der Spey, uh, one of our strategic partners. Uh, and a crypto industry veteran. And we've got Mike Saunders, our chief technical officer. So we've got a full suite of experts on the panel tonight um, who are here to answer your questions. Um, so what we're gonna do in order of process and format, we'll be running through the questions. There may be some questions that we won't be able to answer uh, given the upcoming uh, promotional event that we'll be hosting in November. Remember, guys, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, uh, and we're very promotionally driven with our products and services. And there's a lot of innovations happening, so we don't want to let the cat out of the bag just yet. Uh, but if we can't answer the question, all those questions will be um, divulged in the upcoming weeks in terms of information. So let's get started, um, and we can run through the list of questions on the q a sheet uh so i think the first question is for you mike uh just how open source will smart contract language be that's from mark uh Bolzen. um in terms of how open source um the technical nature of the protocol itself um everything will be made available in terms of the methodology and how to build um, simple contract la language protocol um, contracts, whether that be token contracts, staking contracts, DAO contracts. Um, and then we'll take it a step further with our layer one technology and actually open source usable code bases that developers will then be able to interact with. Um, we've already gotten our pipeline um, to have example code for um, languages like C Sharp um, and JavaScript that make it a lot more accessible to the broader development com community and not restricting users to um, languages like uh, Script and Rust. Great, and just to uh, touch on that point, uh, we did mention it in our showcase this evening, is that is planned for a, an open source release uh, at the end of the year, where we will be timing that with the Media Roadshow, announcing to the market smart contract language is now publicly available. Uh, with all the respective uh, repositories and information that uh, will be released and disseminated. So that'll come uh, at the end of the year. Uh, so some exciting things planned around that. Uh, the next question we have is, what date will the Battle Royale launch? So this was communicated in the showcase tonight. Uh, we will be in a beta phase uh, starting as of now. In, we'll be rolling the product out over the next few weeks. Uh, and that will be communicated in the upcoming days. Uh, then we will be going live with our million dollar tournament in December, also tied in with a strategic release of uh, smart contract language. Uh, as, as mentioned, we're going on a big media blitz around this innovation and what we've done. And uh, that's really gonna be um, you know, the, the, the point um, of opportunity in December. I'll pick up on this one, uh, just a light touch there on Melinda Stark asking a question relating to, you know, the ambassador portal and the various uh, access packs that are available. Great question. Uh, the, the innovation in our compensation as well as the different packs, certainly if you are on a Moonbase pack, you're able to then earn immediately. So you've secured your access within the organization. And regardless of the pack that you're on, you're able to then sell all the various other access packs as well as the products within the ecosystem. So certainly you're not limited based on your pack. 
and uh, we've facilitated the ability for you to be able to fast start regardless of the pack that you're on when you first join. Uh, this is a good question. Uh, hey, Greg, uh, the video was quite short tonight. Uh, can you elaborate uh, on the Fusion One ecosystem a bit further? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, very exciting times. Obviously, we're unveiling something that's been in the works now for going on uh, two and a half years. Uh, we've got a special guest tonight uh, who can give us an overview of uh, the, the Fusion One product, uh, talk a little to the product suite and, uh, you know, the significance of what we're actually delivering here. And uh, I'll hand that over to you, Greg. Thanks, Greg. So... It's a very exciting possibility, and I don't want to get lost in the details of it, but it's important that each of the elements within the Fusion One Play is defined as supporting methodologies and supporting products that are going to add significant value to the entire ecosystem. So, excuse me, what I mean by that is, is that we have systems in place to be able to support stable coins. We have systems in place and tokenization structures for real world assets. These are talking about securities, commodities. These are financial-based primitives or financial-based instruments that would live in a tokenized world that would be tradable within the DEX. Um, further to that, we've got um, complementary support in terms of our, our gaming side as well as DeFi side, the ability to support the token st uh, staking, the uh, token contracts, as well as the earn uh, models themselves. Each and every single um, component of this play is supposed to be to solving one of the core problems within our traditional finance systems and within the traditional de decentralized finance system. So these will be the likes of what we touched on very briefly into the uh, in the release video in terms of the stablecoin framework. I need to be very careful. I don't give away too much in this, but in the utilization of the, the stablecoin frameworks in terms of what that equips us to do from the underlying technology standpoint in terms of servicing offline payments in terms of being able to service additional um, products around the payments infrastructure. Everyone knows just the payments industry as a, as, as a whole is a massive industry. And for us to be able to touch onto that with, among others, is a extremely, extremely viable use case. But the Fusion One ecosystem is fundamentally there to provide the base layer infrastructure to equip all of the additional products that we're currently working on and have currently built. I'm going to leave it at that without giving too much away. Uh, thanks, Greg. Um, certainly, I can pick up on the next question there from Sue uh, Fieldman. Uh, certainly, we have delivered on uh, quite a number of uh, uh, content set within the Ambassador Portal. You're asking specifically around like funnels, uh, contact lists for those personally recruited. Uh, there is a there's actually some updates to the Ambassador Portal that will allow for you to be able to uh, chat directly to uh, your contacts now within within your downline so those solutions now have been updated actually interestingly over the last uh, two to three weeks you'll notice that there is a functionality now to be able to chat directly to your downline as well as then uh, as you're signing up customers uh, you're then notified on that basis so there's been a lot of improvements uh, around funnels around marketing uh, content uh, within the back office and sure please ping me directly and I'll take you through uh, all of those updates directly. Uh, just to, hi, Peter. I got Peter Blackwell's question here. Uh, just to answer your question. So we will be releasing the game over the month of October, announced uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, it's, it's looking fantastic. The experience is really great. You guys are going to be super impressed. Uh, which is also tying into the launch of the Fusion One uh, application in November. Again, there's exciting things around being able to earn VARA, stake your VARA uh, in the application in November. Uh, you know, we've got several earning incentives that we're going to be introducing to the network. This is also a leading question here around uh, one second. Uh, when the company will start uh, earning revenue in terms of the bond system, that also kicks off in November. So subscriptions will be live. The bond mechanism will be live. So we have the Fusion One application. We have the bond system. 
And this is really the moment, guys. November is going to be a massive, massive event. Uh, you know, it's all about R&D for the last eight months. We've been head down in code, really changing the world of, of blockchain. And, and, you know, what we've created here is truly significant. And we can't wait to share it with you guys uh, in November. We're, we're doing a lot of firsts across the board. And this is also another question for Greg van der Spey. And maybe we could just uh, talk a little bit about this is, you know, this significance of bringing stable coins into the Bitcoin ecosystem. And, you know, effectively what EUSD represents as the first stage of that migration. That's a great qu um, question. So essentially what we need to look at is, is what roles do stable coins currently form in both the decentralized world as well as within the payment sector, right? So both as a medium of exchange, um, as well as in some instances, a store of value, you have these payment instruments that essentially enable this a broad range of additional functionality, right? So the important thing to understand is, is that migrating over the utility from a stablecoin capacity in terms of being able to service the likes of the, the Fusion One DEX, what this enables us to do is, is enables us to create um, in line with the atomic swap model and in line with the, the liquidity pools that is currently on um, Fusion One DEX, it allows us to give an intermediary asset to transfer between. Now, what I mean by that is, is that when we start looking at cross-border settlement instruments in terms of being able to set a, settle between countries in an international manner, what we tend to do is, is we tend to try and use a, a intermediary currency in terms of the, the, the transfer mechanism, right? By equipping this and by enabling this further, what it allows us to do is unbelievable from a standpoint of access and more importantly, from a composability standpoint. So what it allows us to do is to tie into this world of decentralized finance and the utility of stable coins and what that means. And obviously the traditional finance world in terms of payments, settlements, and so on and so forth. The additional ramifications thereof is, is allowing us to build codified systems and applications that take advantage of these principles in terms of remittances, remittance apps, um, uh, compliance and legal solutions in terms of settlements, et cetera, et cetera. So I, um, I also want to be too ca very careful not to give away too much in that, but I, I hope I answered your question there, Greg. Yeah, no, that was great. That was great. And maybe just to touch on um, I, I see another question coming through, just the kind of compliance and regulatory process that we've gone through in order to make this a viable, secure, and legal going concern? So that's there's a two-pronged approach to that. So the first and foremost is the underlying collateral that secures the, the EUSD um, asset, right? So this is a Baffin compliant ISIN. Um, it is a security that's issued and held by Society General. Um, it is issued under the EPWG framework in Europe. And this is one of the first of its kinds to be a direct security to be issued on chain. Now, this is a very, very important step because from a legal perspective, especially in terms of upholding token holder rights, this becomes an unbelievably important um, exercise and more importantly, an unbelievably um, compliant solution in terms of being able to not only uphold token holder rights, but being able to comply within the local jurisdictions as to we as we hold. So I'm going to answer two questions in one here because in, in line with the, the traditional frameworks and the securities that are um, that's being offered by regulators within the, the current climate, as well as South Africa, we need to fit under these crypto asset service service provider license or the vir virtual asset service provider licenses in the in the foreign territories and in line with that there has to be compliance solutions and compliance requirements that is going to be able to service both the traditional world as well as the decentralized world so this is a a really really big breakthrough in terms of of the compliance requirements being able to service these assets on chain but more importantly upholding token holder rights within a compliant environment both from a, a local jurisdiction standpoint under the cost when the cost licenses do become relevant, um, excuse me, as well as the international sectors within the markets that we service. Great. Uh, thank you for that, Greg. Uh, just to move on to some other questions that we have. Uh, this is from uh, Mr. Ivy. Hey, Brandon. How much longer will we have uh, to market the, the current uh, packages, including the founder packs? So we will have uh, in the month of October, the, the new compensation plan uh, will come to effect in the month of November. The dates are to be announced in the next week uh, for that specific upcoming event, which is going to be a huge showcase, guys. We're also timing this with our media roadshow. It's timing with 
a lot of things that are going to be synchronized at the same time, including the, the open source uh, announcement to the world of smart contract language. Uh, so you you guys have now until the end of October uh, on, on the Founders Packs. I do want to note that there is a limited supply of them. Uh, this has been communicated. And anyone that has a Founders Pack now uh, and launches who accesses the new application in November will be able to stake their borrow tokens. There is a finite supply of them at this stage. Uh, so yeah, make sure that you guys... Uh, check on the availability of those packs. Uh, we will be also announcing um, some really cool news around the Dark Fusion token, and this will be uh, announced to the network in the up upcoming weeks. And then just to touch on that, Greg, I mean, to answer uh, the, the questions related to that around um, uh, the ongoing amazing uh, product suite that we have communicated today, that is going to happen over the course of the following weeks, where we're going to take these Q and A's directly uh, as we have now today and unpack every single, you know, financial opportunity that uh, Greg Funders Bay has mapped out as part of this framework. So very exciting content set that's going to be coming out of the coming weeks, as well as a number of additional follow up uh, webinars uh, from ourselves uh, to, to carry on with all of the various um, announcements that we've made today. So Brandon, yes, absolutely. We'll do an additional community calls uh, as you've just asked now related to everything that's been showcased today. Mike, I see there's some questions related to just uh, the various Jira, Jira locations. Do you wanna just pick up on that in terms of accessibility of our various applications uh, that we've had uh, as a showcase of our technology over the last week or two. Good, Nick. Um, yeah, so we're, we're aware of a couple of user um, issues in um, a variety of countries. That's not widespread. Um, so just so you guys are all aware, um, we, across the um, various app stores, iOS and Android, we distribute the apps across all countries, um, except for um, People's Rep Republic of Korea, Iran, and Cuba. Um, so if you are having issues downloading the app specifically in your region, please raise a ticket with our support. It's got nothing to do with geolocation specifically, or that you've been excluded intentionally. There's something to do very likely, um, either device, operating system, or um, various accounts, and we will help you through that. Um, and then, uh, uh, Greg, I don't know if we want to just touch on uh, the question pertaining to um, the uh, various USA piece, if that's um, if that's uh, ac acceptable to both yourselves and Greg Van is back, just from Luke. So I don't mind jumping in with this one. Um, no. So, so what's important to understand is, is that where relevant, we will be applying for or have started the application process for all of the regulatory structures that is going to govern this, this ecosystem, right? And especially from a tokenization standpoint, we need to emphasize the level of compliance that is put in play solely on the basis of if we highlight um, the the SEC question, it's it's currently in a in a sort of undefined format, right? vast majority of the current decentralized finance world and crypto world is living in fear of it um, rather than sort of following standard best practice approaches and standard compliance requirements under a base set of assumptions now that's certainly not to say that this is uh, we're expecting super um, bad news from the sec standpoint but in, unfortunately until such time that a regulatory framework can be defined of which we can comply it's very difficult to manage that so what we typically do is we follow best pra best practice approach this is ensures that under every given standpoint, there is a absolute compliance with our KYC requirements, our AML requirements, us being able to service restricted territories, us being able to comply in terms of reporting, us being able to have inherent systems built in place with the applications that we build that prove real-time solvency. 
So this ties into into a sort of an additional question that was mentioned in terms of the vulnerabilities. So we not only do we have mapping tools to be able to go through and test the defined product itself, but there is compliance requirements above that that give us a real time overview on the basis that this is a blockchain. This data is freely available and publicly available, so it gives us the ability to provide extensive reporting. Now, where possible, we will start the application, especially so. Casp is a good um, is a is a good example. We started the regulatory. Uh, process on our side in terms of the compliance and licensing frameworks that we need to do for, to service South Africa. But more importantly, this applies for all of the additional um, jurisdictions that we're servicing. Unfortunately, at this particular time, the SEC has not given us a governable framework of which we can um, adhere to. So we do follow um, a certain best practice assumptions um, and ensuring that there is investor protections, compliance requirements above and beyond that while we continue to seek clarity from the regulators. Anyone that's been following in terms of the ETF news, ignoring the fake um, news that came out this afternoon that got everyone wow. super excited. <laughs> there is unfortunately a, a lack of clarity from the SEC side. Um, and from our perspective, we we will comply. We just need to understand what we would need to comply with. So in the interim, um, we, we do have certain restrictions on the participation, but it isn't something that is to be concerned about because one of our primary focus from a tokenization standpoint is the compliance that's associated with this. The product needs to be um, uh, fluid and needs to work within the set um, restrictions set by the regulators themselves. And also we need to ensure that we comply with all of the reporting standards in order to ensure that we can service the broad range of jurisdictions under this. Greg, also just uh, touching on that, um, I'm excited. We've made some big announcements with uh, SockGen Society General. Hope they like that acronym of their of their brand. Do you want to just touch on that a little bit? It's uh, been been obviously the buzz in the office over the last uh, couple of weeks. So. It's a very exciting thing to talk about. Fundamentally, what we're talking about is we're talking about an on-chain compliance issuance instrument. Now, that's a lot of words to describe a compliance on-chain issuance of a security. So if we start to look at the, the traditional ways in which securities are issued, this is something that is both fringe in nature and is something that has been in the works for many years from a compliance and regulatory standpoint. So being able to not only issue the underlying security on chain in the form of an ISN, so an international security identification number is essentially your social security number that is spread across the jurisdictions that um, governs and controls each underlying issued security, depending on the nature of which the, or the nature and the jurisdiction of the, the security itself. But this is important to understand that this underlying framework that forms the basis of this EUSD currency is a secure compliance solution as a security issued on chain. Just that in itself is something that I know many, many partners within the decentralized finance world have been working on for years. Some have got rights to a certain extent, and I think that we are at the forefront of being able to offer these real tangible solutions in the form of real world assets and securities on chain, which further complement the entire Fusion One DEX ecosystem. That is unbelievably important, not only from a compliance standpoint, but also what we can do with the underlying security and underlying collateral as the, the next phase. I'm going to stop there before I give anything away. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all mike just uh we've been chatting about this just uh there's one or two questions uh from some of our uh, uh new ambassadors pertaining to uh card payments don't know if you want to just give uh give an overview of all the security that we have in place around accepting card payments and the innovation we've made with the updates to the back office from a matching vp versus a curl vp I think that's something everyone would love to know. Sure, thanks, Nick. So I think there's quite a quite a lot to talk about there, actually. Um, so one of the the big steps forward that we have implemented is um, a variety of credit card processes to facilitate um, a global audience. Um, this is to serve um, our network um, first and foremost from a fees perspective. Um, I know some of the South African cohort would have um, have encountered a couple of issues in the past two days, which we did resolve today. That was um, facilitating um, ZAR payments instead of denominated in US dollars. Um, so yeah, there's uh, we were aware of an issue that has been fixed. Um, but then that sort of talks to the second part of your points, um, Nick, around um, I think just generally how we are managing um, and governing um, potential fraud and user uh, protection themselves. So, um, and 
And the, the first thing to note is um, we're quite strong with our um, multi-factor authentication on payments. Um, so in other markets, that's known as um, 3D Secure um, or 2FA. So we ensure that all credit card payments um, go through that verification, whether it be in your own banking app or through an OTP sent via SMS. Um, and this also facilitates the security for us to be able to um, allow any sort of um, refund chargeback mechanism as well. So in order to protect us as a business, um, we're implementing a essentially a 14-day uh, cool-off period where um, this will allow users to um, act on their, um, their, their legal right to a refund if they chose to change their mind, um, but also facilitates us being able to unbundle any um, fraudulent activity where um, points might have flowed up into the system. Um, this making sure that we've got a very accurate reflection of our VP and we aren't prematurely matching until we know that funds are um, securely locked up away in escrow and allocated to the compensation plan accordingly. Uh, I just wanted to uh, follow that. Uh, this is all pertaining to credit card payments, as you know, we we are beholden to uh, the, the the merchants and the acquirers uh, and the banks themselves in 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 regarding the process of funds. And uh, when it comes to crypto, uh, as we've promised uh, since the beginning, those are daily instant payouts. This only pertains to credit card payments, where there will be a call of. Uh, period which we, we will be implementing and this is to protect the business and to protect our customers absolutely and uh, i think uh, if i may greg just touch on some of the questions there pertaining to uh, the, the the subscriptions as well as uh, some of the questions around our staking rewards i think certainly we're very excited to announce uh, greg van der Bay. <laughs> that we have uh, delivered and we will be delivering on uh, a number of incredible uh, staking reward mechanisms for what essentially is the existing founders. And I'm I I'm so uh, pleased that we're uh, facilitating the ability now for, you know, access key holders, existing uh, VARA token holders, as well as the other components that we put together, really um, financial inclusion around uh, what those pools represent. I don't know if you just want to touch on that now as you've been the brainchild behind putting that together. So the principle is fairly simple, right? The, the mechanisms by which we have built out allow additional yield in the form of staked assets to to form part of a, a basket, right? Or a an index or a risk um, spread basket. Now, what we mean by that is, is that there is a there are multiple um, elements to this right and the, the multiple elements are spread across certain risk profiles and spread across different compliance protocols so what's important to understand is that these different risk, risk thresholds offer a compounding and and diversified yield spread across the underlying security assets that we mentioned earlier in the form of um, digital assets in um, dft in the form of virus staking in the form of key staking and obviously, as this this ecosystem progresses, that starts to look bigger and better with additional services and additional revenue, as well as additional tokens and what that looks like. So it's an important step forward in being able to offer this diversified yield product in a compliant manner that ticks all of the boxes and services and upholds all of the token holder rights. Thanks for that, Craig. Um, and again, guys, uh, a lot of information is going to be disclosed uh, over the next uh, coming weeks. Uh, we don't want to reveal uh, too much now. There's also some questions around uh, the contents of the, the updated packs. Again, that will be uh, announced uh, come November when we launch the product. Uh, so when we go live with this product, we'll be announcing the new updated compensation plan and the contents uh, in the packs. Very much so. And I see also that there are some uh, questions pertaining to, you know, passwords, retrieval, et cetera. Uh, we could certainly uh, link back our customer success team that will gladly uh, take you on that journey for reset passwords. There is that functionality within the native applications as well as in the ambassador portal. So, so just, any just of those as questions a... we'll happily take, yeah. 
uh, just some clarity around one question that I have here from Luke. Uh, is the VARA staking in the Fusion app or will the staking take place on the VARA app? So to be very clear, uh, the, the Fusion 1 application is now the capture all ecosystem. This is going to be the decentralized exchange uh, powered by Dark Fusion. This will be the decentralized application layer. This is where you'll have yield staking. This is where you'll have all the products built into this Fusion One ecosystem uh, where it comes to uh, financial opportunities, when it comes to the product layer, that will be Fusion One. Vara is our sales affiliate layer, which is afforded all the opportunities built out by the Dark Fusion technology. Vara has the rights in perpetuity to be the exclusive sales arm of the entire dark fusion ecosystem. That's how we distribute the product. That's how we're going to propagate this whole story. Uh, just uh, in form of clarity, I come on as a VARA member. I sign up and I have access to a product suite. One of those product suites being Fusion One, which you will download the application and you have access to the staking mechanics. Um, Greg, we obviously covered um, a, a number of questions there pertaining to, you know, the staking rewards. I see Mike's asked a question around, you know, the gaming ecosystem, Fusion One, decentralized uh, uh, exchange. And uh, we've got a lot of content that's going to be coming out there now shortly uh, pertaining to all of these components. As we've been saying, uh, there is... Uh, uh, this incredible ability to be able to stake not only your access keys, your VARA tokens earned from the subscriptions from within the gaming revenue, and that's all coming online. So uh, very much so chain, uh, tune in uh, over the course of this coming week and next week as we unpack all of these questions uh, that is pertaining to what we've announced tonight. And then also just uh, there's a few questions pertaining to my segment of the showcase around uh, the new uh, the new plans. Uh, those obviously will be um, broadcast in in finer detail around you know what's coming and what you can expect from a sales perspective, from a compensation plan point of view, and you know how we're changing the game now with the inclusion of these uh, financial instruments as part and parcel of the product offering. So uh, just to give clarity there, absolutely, we will then go through the narrative around uh, the various access plans that uh, I made an announcement on, and that's going to happen over the coming weeks. I think just Keith there, just to answer that light touch question, uh, certainly around um, the Star Vara Battle Royale uh, application that will take place uh, where you're going to be able to get your links <laughs> to download from iOS and Android. Uh, that will be made available to you as we go through the phase rollout. Um, not too sure there on specifically Chinese mobiles, perhaps. I'm, I'm unsure of the, those types of questions. Um, are you referring to the types of handsets? Um, Mike, uh, we're running on iOS and Android, so any uh, any phone that uh, represents those two uh, software platforms uh, will be available. So any of the uh, local brands within your region that supports either the Android operating system or the iOS operating system, uh, we have made available uh, the various native applications on that platform. Not so, Mike. Yeah, Nick, I think that comment was actually follow up for the <laughs> distribution to Sweden. But um, uh, it's I see, it, okay. No it's an interesting point you raise. Um, so we sort of undertake every endeavor to um, ensure that our applications are as far back, backward compatible um, as we can feasibly go without um, subjecting ourselves to any in inherent security risks. Typically across the various um, platforms, um, that would mean in the region of about three years for um, what the operating systems will support. So whatever version of Android or iOS you're running, um, if it's no older than about three to three and a half years, typically um, you are 
can you know live with absolute certainty that the um, applications will be um, able to run on um, your device from the OS perspective. And then um, the game has um, performance requirements in terms of around about four gigabytes of um, RAM, um, which is fairly standard across the board for the last few years for devices. So yeah, pretty much backward compatible. Um, Greg van der Spee, sorry, just picking up on this one, there's a question related to um, uh, the great work we've done <laughs> uh, collectively. And I don't know if you want to just touch on, you know, the implementation of smart contracts, this incredible innovation around the Bitcoin blockchain ecosystem. Um, just to give some clarity on that, that would be amazing. Greg, sorry, I, I don't know if you wanted to jump in there. I'm happy to take it. <laughs> oh, sorry. The, welcome with either either of you. Yes, I mean, a, a short answer. Uh, let me just read the question so I make sure I'm getting the answer right. Uh, yes, we're dealing with cryptocurrency, assisting in the implementation of smart contracts on Bitcoin. So uh, smart contract language will be a world first, uh, which we'll be announcing. Uh, this isn't any, um, you know, surprise news that we were coming out with. We, we have been purporting uh, this for some time now with our big reveal and showcase. But really, you know, what the market wants to see, what the communities want to see is proof in the pudding. And that's where we open source and that's where we get the media behind it. And this thing's going to take off like a rocket ship. Watch out for the end of the year. We're, we're, we're coming hard and fast. But just to answer your question, in short, we're dealing with cryptocurrency, assisting in the implementation of smart contracts on the Bitcoin blockchain one and two. So layer one and layer two. And we're going to take out Ethereum by doing it right. Yes, we're forging the path for Bitcoin, uh, but we're not excluding traditional chains. We're all about ubiquitous access, giving everyone access into operability through Bitcoin, but also creating bridges to other blockchains. We're a full turnkey ecosystem, but our focus and vision and drive is building out the future of Bitcoin. Greg, if I may also interject, it's it's important to understand from a technical standpoint right now that the there are quite a significant amount of limitations that currently um, Ethereum faces. Yeah. More notably, the limitations within the Ethereum virtual machine, or as we call it, the EVM. Unfortunately, it, as as fantastic and as decentralized as Ethereum uh, tries to be. There is a massive problem that's coming to Ethereum in the for, in the sense that their underlying gas token, once it reaches a set point that's matched with a set amount of network activity, the network becomes unusable. It is unfortunately too difficult and too expensive to use the, the, the systems. And unfortunately, these massive gas prohibitations are, are really, really starting to impact all of the EVM-related chains. There are a few services and there are a few um, solutions that are trying very hard to fix this. But... When we compare apples with apples, and as we discuss from a throughput perspective, it's important to understand that all of the, the solutions that we're solving in terms of SEL radically reinvent the way in which we are looking at these codified and programmatic languages that is currently being supported by EVM. And more notably, every single solution, enterprise, bank, everyone's experiencing the same problem. So there is a massive opportunity here for us to disrupt the space by being able to offer a technically superior solution. And that's where things start to get very exciting. Uh, maybe you just want to elaborate a little bit there. I know you can't uh, give away you know, all of it, Greg, but we were having a discussion uh, today um, around you know, this, this kind of complete synchronicity of, you know, Good fortune, opportunity, the right timing, everything coming together at the same time, and what this really means for the future of uh, you know decentralized finance, decentralized applications, um, and 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 the possibilities. So, if we just look at the the unique opportunity that's currently unfolding with Bitcoin, um, we've got both a regulatory opportunity as well as a technical opportunity. The regulatory opportunity is is that fundamentally put is the ETF is is currently in process or should be pro well, we aim at uh, well we guess it's going to be released within the course of the next sort of two or two quarters um that's obviously dependent on the SEC I mean we saw how the market reacted just with a little bit of fake news today so there's obviously a significant amount of institutional um, interest but more importantly the retail investors at the moment are, are significantly aligned and supportive of this play from a institutional standpoint when we look at it from a an opportunity in terms of competitors, this is where things start to get very interesting because 
coupled with the halving that's coming soon, every single EVM chain that's tried to do anything is, is experiencing massive, massive problems as soon as you put one successful application on it, right? We've got a story to tell in that regard. I don't want to steal anyone's thunder on it, but we've broken a few networks that are public in nature that are supposed to be the supportive layer twos. So we've been through the hard work of identifying all of these issues within the EVM space, and more importantly, identifying how these impact the systemic applications that are built on top of it. Because it doesn't help that Ethereum goes through massive amounts of fees. Every single application or ERC-20 token that's minted on an NFT is two, there is a, it becomes almost unusable for anyone that's building on the ecosystem. So it not only impacts that base layer, it impacts every single tertiary layer around it. Now, it's only a matter of time until this happens again. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Now, when we look at this coupled with the, the um, sublime interest on, on BTC, the true decentralized nature and the more important elegant proof of work system that governs this, you've got almost an alignment of stars in the form of the ETF, in the form of the halving, in the, in the form of the um, EVM support radically reducing and, re and unfortunately not exactly instilling confidence in the developers and the teams that are working at it. So it is a, a fantastic opportunity to have this level of technology and this proficiencies within the Bitcoin tech stack that not only services both layer one, but also layer two, and furthermore, any UTX, uh, UTXO based chain. This is where things start to get really, really interesting. Guys, uh, just uh, also to... Uh announce and answer Peter's question. Uh, we were going to, sorry guys, just give me a second. Uh, please clarify the, the VAR 100 to 1 DFT situation and what people can expect and when. Uh, so we were going to hold back this announcement. Anyone with a founder's pack now uh, on the 100 to 1 swap, the company is going to gift the founders DFT tokens on 100 to 1 VARA. So anyone that has a founders pack now will get free DFT tokens uh, in their wallet by the end of the month, by the launch of the Fusion One application, which you'll be able to stake. And that is a gift from the company to all the support and founders that have been with us uh, since the start. Uh, and yeah, I hope that clarifies your question, Peter. Um, again, guys, there are a limited supply. Uh, but uh, yeah, that that I think answers the question. <laughs> um, I'm just going to pick up on uh, one or two questions. I think we've answered those uh, around pertaining um, yeah, the 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 access packs, uh, the current uh, uh, packs that are on offer at the moment. Uh, specifically in terms of the founders packs, we've uh, showcased that value uh, consistently over the course of the last. Uh, uh, showcases and uh, stay tuned for you know where we're going to then deep dive into uh, the various uh, financial opportunities that we're going to make available in the coming weeks. Uh, just to answer a question around the delivery of the game, uh, as as mentioned, uh, the game will be going live now this month. We'll be doing a stage rollout in beta. I would also like to say. The guys, we're doing multiple world firsts. We're introducing a new blockchain uh, that's going to effectively be the migration from traditional blockchains onto Bitcoin. Our technology now is benchmarked with billion dollar companies. We are contributing so much value here on all fronts. Uh, the game is obviously an important part of our roadmap and process but we will be doing this in stages to make sure that we're delivering the most value on our promise to the network. Uh, guys, please bear with us. I promise you this is all going to come together uh, as promised, um, but so, so much more. So look out for the announcements over the next couple of days, and we will be updating the network on what that release looks like, uh, and you will be getting the links to our November event. I don't know, Greg, do we want to do um, a number just clo closing? Uh, I see we've answered a, a great deal of the of the questions pertaining. Yes, to guys. Sorry, just to answer Luke's, yeah. Yeah, Luke's question. Uh, the moon, planet and solar packs uh, will be changing come November. That is correct.
just to answer uh, some more clarity around the Fusion application, uh, this is an application that you will download through the VARA platform. The VARA platform is a separate application. This is designed exclusively for our VARA ambassadors and affiliates. Uh, all the products that we create uh, and ingest will be a part of the VARA platform where you can download and you can access. Um, uh, Steve, just a question pertaining to uh, the staking mechanic. Uh, Great Fund Bay, I think uh, maybe some clarity on um, the, the, the token issuance as it currently stands now vis-a-vis uh, -vis the ability to be able to stake. So we've made it clear that there are four uh, staking opportunities from access keys to VARA to DFT, and there is then an allocated uh, pool that you're staking uh, against. Yeah. So yeah. certainly... I'm not going to give away too much detail. Yeah, um, I, think I, we, I think we hold no, off on that for now, guys. I yeah. think we've, we've, yeah. we've released a lot of uh, important information. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, there's some huge announcements coming up. As I said, uh, November is going to be our biggest showcase yet. This is the time where we announce to the world we're, we're, we're coming out firing. The media is going to be behind this. Uh, everyone's going to know who this company is. Uh, you know, we've we've been we've been in the shallow waters uh, for the last few months, um, and that's all strategic. You know, we're we're not shooting the gun. There's the halving coming up with Bitcoin. It's all about timing, um, and you know, we pride ourselves on running a, an ethical, eth <laughs> an ethical and sustainable business, um, and bringing true value to our ambassadors and founders. So we don't want to give away too much, but information will be released in the coming weeks. Guys, just regarding the staking pools and content and tokenomics, there will be updates to this. Again, information will be released to the network prior to the launch of the Fusion One application. Guys, everything that we're introducing now in November is gonna be packed with value. It's going to give the ambassadors something really, really good to go out there and start propagating the system, uh, providing real incentive and earning opportunities. Uh, we've designed this meticulously uh, for your benefit, uh, and we will be announcing it in the coming weeks. I think you're on mute there, Nick. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was going to just, uh, I was just going to touch on, uh, there's one or two questions pertaining to subscriptions. And uh, as we've stated all along, uh, there are going to be a number of subscriptions that will tie to the game economy, as well as to access to the earning pools within uh, the Star Bar Battle Royale. So that will be announced um, in the coming weeks pertaining to how subscriptions are going to be uh, bought and sold, not only from the ambassadors within the VARA uh, network, but as well as opening that up to uh, the gaming community. So uh, we've had a lot of content pertaining to these subscriptions, and now they're coming on stream. So very exciting from that point of view. Hey guys, we're going to give it uh, 10 minutes uh, for a wrap up just to answer any more questions. Uh, and we'll have a hard stop at uh, eight o'clock uh, South African time. Luke, uh, <laughs> uh, Greg, Greg, do we pick up on just those last two questions uh, pertaining to uh, 
the, the battle royale. Mike, do you want to do you want to talk to that? Uh, sorry, not muted anymore. Nick, sorry, which question specifically? The no, one just all... related to the battle royale. That's all. Um, just those two last questions in, in the. Uh, Luke, just to yeah. just answer your question, uh, we've got uh, an, a number of uh, features planned on our roadmap. Um, I see you say, "Can we wage a Vara in the battle royale?" Uh, it is a plan uh, on on the roadmap with your Vara, where you can play in competitions, but that's not something that we're implementing at this stage. You will be able to earn Vara through playing in battle royale tournaments uh, run on leaderboards uh, like the, the million dollar, which will be uh, um, hosted uh, come end of the year, where you'll be able to enter into that and you'll be able to win prizes and Vara through uh, playtime rewards. But we certainly have those features on the roadmap. Uh, and I think there's also a question. We are looking to launch this in this specific product, the gaming product. Uh, we're launching the product in phases, uh, as always communicated. But again, we're we're working on something that's so much bigger now, guys. You know, Starvara is a key component uh, to our strategy in kickstarting this economy uh, through creating the internal game exchange, uh, which we've always spoken about, uh, from cosmetics to wearables, creating value behind these in-game assets and how that ties into this layer two innovation which we've created on lightning through instant uh, payments um, at incredibly low costs the efficiencies thereof and all of that is being delivered uh, into this product but again you know if you looked at the roadmap we're we're planning on introducing so much more so we've got a number of other products that we're going to be bringing into the ecosystem, leveraging off uh, the SEL technology. We've already got a lot of commitment from strategic partners that are going to be joining us. Um, and you would have noticed when we announced uh, the roadmap, uh, we're also planning on launching our own marketplace, which is going to be delivered uh, to the network, which is going to be a suite of products that the network will have access to. So there's a lot of exciting things that we'll be announcing um, on the November event, uh, which we 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 can't announce just yet. Uh, but I hope that answers your question. And then Uwe, um certainly uh, we we will be making the documentation uh, attainable uh, directly within uh, the back office pertaining to the fusion one one page one pages sorry as well as the as white paper on dark fusion yes absolutely thanks for that luke appreciate the appreciate the message <laughs> guys we're very excited about what's coming uh we're going to send out the link for the november event um, make sure we spread the word this time. This is going to be an extravaganza. We're really announcing some big news. It's, uh, you know, this has been two and a half years in the making for us. Uh, we're now at a point where we're going to be releasing uh, SEL to the market. Again, it's going to be timed uh, with a media roadshow. There's going to be a lot of attention uh, around Dark Fusion and what we're doing here. This is a global play. We're an infrastructure play. We're changing the world of the Bitcoin ecosystem, the digital currency of the future, the hedge of inflation and digital currencies. And you know, if, if you don't have Bitcoin, you should invest in Bitcoin. If you don't have DFT, you should invest in DFT. Uh, this is really going to be a future changer, guys. Um, and I wanna say that uh, we're really proud of you guys, what you guys have done, the support, um, You know, all our top ambassadors, our top leaders that have stuck in there since the beginning. We appreciate you guys. And we promise you we're going to be delivering something that's going to change the world. That's it for me, guys. Any closing remarks, Nick, Mike? No, just uh, echo, uh, Greg. Uh, inspirational as always. And um, yeah, we're, we're, we're just, uh, we're constantly, you know, building, innovating, uh, delivering. So um, look out for uh, the next couple of days, next couple of weeks where, you know, things start to actually uh, materialize in such a big way. It just can't be proud of what we've done so far. So thank you to everyone that's been on this call, uh, really. And uh, yeah, value everybody uh, that we've 
being able to chat to you today. Christmas is coming <laughs> soon. Herschel. <laughs> Herschel, Herschel, Herschel. Christmas is coming, brother. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Great, guys. I hope we've answered all your questions. We've, we've, we've gone through the list. I think we have. Uh, thank you for joining, guys. And uh, we'll, we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.